it's time. And I don't mean the Sport New Zealand survey. I'm talking about the ATM Apologise to Me podcast. Mark Watson joins us, episode Unlucky 13, Watto. Welcome back. Yeah, how are you, mate? Hey, you're looking at me slightly differently, perhaps. So I went swimming this morning, Martin. And it's about excellence, but that chlorine combined with a little bit of BO, yeah, bottled it all up, and it's called excellence, my friend. And look, you've got a little twinkle in your eye. You're looking slightly differently. So if you'd like to buy excellence from Watto, check out my website, chlorine and BO. Mm, we are going to be talking about the tail wagging the dog, or is it just Adi Savir getting a hell of a deal for himself that the rest of us would take if we could with our employers? Rugby League World Cup, Women's Rugby World Cup, Manchester City can be beaten. The mighty Liverpool proved when that over the weekend. Walk, uh, Lachlan, Lachlan, join me, join me. And the T20 storm, World Cup hold too. Hold your head. Look at him. Listen to this. This is, this is what eighth place does, all. ladies and gentlemen. This is the pursuit of excellence is what I says. Oh, you're an eighth. You're celebrating like you've won something. Apologise to me. It is the Apologise to Me podcast. My name is Martin Devlin from The Platform. Kicking it with Artie Savier's sabbatical. The man signed a four-year deal last year. Interesting that they've only just leaked this little bit of information that after the World Cup next year in France, he is off to Japan for a few months to get rich with the Kobe Steelers, and then he comes back uh, missing the Super Rugby season, but will be eligible for the All Blacks. And it's almost like Ian Foster actually gave him a rubber stamp, says he will be eligible to play for the Bledisloe Cup, and so forth. Okay, a couple of things on this, mate. First and foremost, any employee in any job anywhere in the country, if you were able to, Mark, where your employer said to you, listen, you're doing a great job here, you're getting very, very well paid to do that job, but you're allowed to fly anywhere in the world for four months and go and do a similar job somewhere else, we're going to hold your position for you for four months and then you're going to come back. So I applaud Adi Savir with his negotiating skills and whoever does it for him to to actually wrestle this clause into a contract. But in terms of New Zealand rugby, is this just more evidence of the power that the Players Association and the players have and the tail is wagging the dog? Because you've got a competition called the NPC that nobody's interested, nobody watches, nobody goes to. You've got Super Rugby now where they can't sell out the crowds and one of your star players, one of your best players, one of your crowd-pleasing players isn't going to be there as well. It would be a crisis if 20 of the players were doing this. It's only one, it's only the odd one. Well, so hey, hey, is hey, it hey, worth on making a big deal about it? Bowden Barrett, or Geordie Barrett's just done it as well. So that's two now. But you're right, so let's go back at it. What it actually just says to me, two things. Yes, you're 100% correct. The Players Association have way too much power. The only people benefiting in this country at the moment are an exclusive group group of, say, 34, 35 All Blacks. And it's all about me, me, me. But it also says to me that New Zealand rugby still don't get it. They still don't care about the domestic game. It is all about the All Blacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they somehow believe that even if though you erode the club base, MPC and Super Rugby, we're still somehow, as long as St Kennigans and Kings are still firing up, we're somehow still going to be able to support the All Blacks in the future. You, 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 look, Martin, you s- saw it. less than 3,000 people turned up to watch Wellington, Hawke's Bay, Ranfurly Shield clash. Um, what do we get on the weekend for those semi-finals? Really, really 4, poor 000, crowds in Wellington yeah, Auckland, for yeah, Auckland, and no Wellington. Sellout in and it won't be a sellout for this cup final this Saturday, the MPC. Now, they think, oh yeah, but this is just indicative of the MPC, um, but it's not Super Rugby. No, wake up. That is now flowing into Super Rugby as well. And they just continue and continue to erode it. You know, so I'm going to turn up in 2024 Super Rugby, the best rugby player in the world. And it is Artie Severe, in my opinion. I don't care what team you put him on. I think he's the best footballer in the world. He's not available. Okay. Geordie Barrett's not going to be available. Both players, by the way, just happen to play for the Hurricanes. Well, Hurricanes fans, don't bother turning up. But hey, hey. They'll be available for the All Blacks, an All Black team that would have lost the World Cup, oh, even though we go. put all of our eggs in one basket. And then they wonder why people are disinterested. When are they actually going to realise, look after the customer? Why can't they look at what the English Premier League does? Look at the footballers that were out on the field yesterday for Manchester City, Liverpool. They turn up, they do it again on Wednesday against West Ham. You know, this is the model around the world. But, oh, not here in little old New Zealand. We know best because we've got to look after them. I don't give a damn with you, Rady Sevier. I don't give a damn with you, Geordie Barrett. If you need to have a sabbatical to still want to stay in this country and play in the All Black jersey, just piss off. I've had enough. I've had enough with them, Martin, and I apologise for the language, but I am just sick and tired of these clowns holding a gun to everybody else's head while club rugby is struggling, clubs don't even have facilities, and the provincial unions are, are too bloody bankrupt to do anything. 
All of that may be true, but I'll tark it back to the fact that the players, and they have got uh, what, whatever power that they have at the moment, and they can negotiate these deals. And, and no one in their right mind would say no to that. Every single person offered that opportunity would do it. You know, the, I suppose the frustration for me is more that I look around the world and I look like, you know, like you just have mentioned, and I look at other sports and there is no other sport in the world that would let their players do it. Okay. Nobody in the NFL would be allowed to do this. Nobody in the NRL would be able to do this. What happens is, is if you want to leave, I say, you know, that's fine, yeah. but you can't come back and get a guaranteed anything. No, but you know, what should have to happen is you should have to come back here and start again at the bottom. But of course, that's not going to be the way that New Zealand rugby do. And also, when you look at the players that have gone to Japan and you go through Retallick, uh, Bowden Barrett, Jerome Kano, TJ, the only name out of a long list that stands out is Jerome Kano, who came back and probably played better than he did before he left. But everyone else has really struggled. It took Bowden Barrett a good year to get back to form. TJ Pedernard has never been the same player. Brody Retallick is finding his form now, but it took him a long time to actually get back too. And so there's no guarantee that when you go over there and you play for four months in Japan that you are going to come back match fit, ready to play for the All Blacks. However, this is just the way that it is done these days. And you can say that, that the power is in the Players Association, Mark. It is. The Players Association put the spanner in the Silver Lake wheel. It was a $475 million deal that turned into a $200 million deal, mate. So, you know, I'm not arguing with you on, on, yeah. on, any, on any of that. And but, you can't begrudge no, yourself no, here. No, but and what New Zealand Rugby Union will turn around and logically say, look, we can't compete with the salaries overseas, but what we can do is have the Japanese competition help subsidise us, help us allow to prop these guys and come up so that we can try and keep them here. You know what? I would rather we take Artie Severe's salary and make sure that going forward we lock down Joe Schmidt. We lock down Jason Ryan, that we never let that intellectual property, that we've got the Leon McDonald's, our other coaches around the country. Uh, what are we doing to keep Scott Robertson here? Do we need to offer him another million dollars? Because you know what's going to happen? He's going to end up taking the England job. And you know what's going to happen? England are then going to go and win a Rugby World Cup because they've got the best coach. And then you tell me what was more beneficial, keeping Artie Severe in the country or neglecting our coaches and taking all of our intellectual property overseas and lifting the Northern Hemisphere game beyond what it already is. And they are above us at the moment. They just simply don't get it, Martin. But the game itself at a grassroots level is in trouble. I, I, was, um, at, I was at a function the other day talking to a high-powered member of the military services. And we were talking to you, maybe, and just and how often does this come up? Every conversation, oh, I just don't really care anymore, you know, Mark. A, I just uh, don't uh, care anymore. And, this is what, yeah, and they've killed it, they've killed it off, you, and they continue to kill it off. This is where New Zealand rugby have absolutely, just lost, no idea. They absolutely lost the plot. Apologise to me! The soul of New Zealand rugby is the NPC. There is nobody watching this. They've turned it into a TV sport. Look, the, the way that rugby works in this country these days, people, is very simple. Gate takings mean zero. No one, no one is existing because of the money that comes through the gate. The spectators at the grounds yeah. is, 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 is just something that is either there or it oh. isn't there, and the New Zealand Rugby Union doesn't care. They sell the TV rights to Sky or whoever they sell them to, and that's all they care about. KPI boxes are ticked, income is earned. But in terms of the spectacle when you turn the TV on, and it's players in our national game playing in front of empty crowds, it is not a good no, look. But it used the rest to be. of the world's looking at this going, what's happened to rugby yeah. in New Zealand? But, but it's interesting. You go back, and we, I know we're going to touch on it, but you look yesterday, right? Liverpool, Manchester City played in just a cauldron, just a stunning atmosphere, the niggle, the intensity, the best players in the, on the world going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, the manager so engaged that one, in fact, gets a red card because his emotions and passion boil over and the crowd gets involved. And then after the game, you've got about four or five different narratives that have been written about about, and they're getting $100 billion television deals because of what is going on. Meanwhile, back here, 3,000 turning up to yeah, Eden Park, the no cemetery engaged, with mate. chips. No, one's, no engaged. one's engaged. No. And then saying, well, I wonder where our income streams are coming from. Hey, look, just on that, and I've got to touch on this, but I picked up this article on stuff, and I know you don't want to give them any coverage at all, but this Zoe George, another one of these journalists who just seems to have uh, an agenda, can't write sort of um, neutrally or can't write without having a crack at men. Everything she writes has got a feminist no, that's right. angle. That's right. I'm not interested and in she's it, come out, She's come out and she's talking about the pay gap once again, and this is leading into women's rugby. And she comes out and says, this week marks 50 years since the passing of the Equal Pay Act in Aotearoa, but the gender pay gap remains vast. The current gender pay cap for Pakeha women is 11%, for Māori women it's 19%, and for Pacifica women it's 25%, according to 
um, to mind the gap. Now, she will imply that it's simply to do with your gender. She never actually goes into the reason why there is a gender pay gap, where an egalitarian society such as Scandinavia, it's proven more women want to be nurses, more women want to be teachers, men want to be engineers, men and women are different, uh, men work longer hours, they are more ruthless in terms of getting to the top. Can you please stop telling me the reason why our women are not getting paid as much as simply gender? That is rubbish. No, 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 sorry, and you lose true. your credibility, but then, totally then... Rubbish. They start trying to draw comparisons between the women's rugby players, the Black Ferns and the All Blacks, and how come the men are getting this, and how come the women are only getting this. And then Rob Nickel from the Players Association, one of the most disingenuous interviews I'm sure he's probably given, trying to make out that, look, actually, the argument about men bringing in commercial income is irrelevant. And that somehow women should be, our women rugby players should be getting paid as much as the men. No, he doesn't I, believe I, that I for just, a second, He doesn't mate. believe he doesn't that believe for that a damn for a second. second. I mean, He's look, just feeding her. Look, this is just... And you tell me this. I'll ask anybody this. How many people turned up to Waitakere Stadium? Why wasn't the Black Ferns game against Wales held at Eden Park in front of 30,000 people at $50 a head rather than in front of 3,500 at Waitakere Stadium, $10 entry and $5 because for kids? Because it's the most basic economic equation in the world. It's Keynesian economics. It's demand and supply. Absolutely. That's exactly but what it is. We live me. in a world where well, that I don't is... want to ask the question this. So do you want our Black Ferns earning a million dollars a year for four tests... In, in a sport where there's three countries that are any good at it, or would you rather have that money put into provincial rugby, put into the provincial unions to support grassroots? You tell me, does Rob Nickel honestly believe that he thinks our black ferns deserve as much as no, the All Blacks and that somehow revenue has look, nothing to do with nonsense. it? It's Look, it is a nonsensical argument. I'm over it. And I've it, given up on the World Cup because everything is politicised. Stop politicising women's sport. Let me just enjoy it. Let it grow organically. No, it's a, look, I've got no argument with that at all. And I've sat here and I've argued the same, the same points over and over again. The Women's World Cup is what it is. It is a fledgling tournament which is building momentum and let it build momentum. It's been held in Waitakere because 5,000 people in Waitakere looks like a good crowd, mate. They couldn't have held that a Black Ferns game at, versus Wales at, at Eden Park because 3,000 people in there would have looked like the quarterfinal or the, the semi-final, yeah, the NPC Wellington Auckland, and it would have been embarrassing. So, you know, and the organisers have done all they can here. They have scheduled games to match the Northern Hemisphere. Um, from what I understand, there's about a million people watching the England-France game in England, the, the women's uh, pool match, which is a pretty good, pretty good crowd, pretty good audience to get on TV. But that's what it is. Oh, is only George will be telling us it's, a, it's half a million next week. Yeah, but I mean, don't let it wind week. you up, mate. There's no point letting it wind oh, you up. There's no, look, there's but, no point because all she's doing is she's trying to prick and provoke like this. I mean, you know, but just, have because some credibility just because it's a journalist, well, man. There's no credibility in none of these media organisations, mate. As you say, it is all politicised. I mean, you know, does anyone with a brain read or listen to any of that and actually agree with it? Look, it's the same, and I'll go back to the same well, argument. Let me listen to Heather this. Heather Duplessy Allen does not earn the same as Mike Hosking, and I know this because I worked at News yep. Talk ZB, and there is no way Heather's going to sit there and say, as a woman, I deserve the much well, as him mate. because his ratings are 22% in breakfast. He owns the company. Without him, the company is dead and so that's why he gets paid it is demand and supply it is performance if you want to be in a performance industry and in a performance environment then guess what you get paid how you perform how many people watch what you rate and in terms of the Black Ferns, I believe that most of those players probably want to get treated like that, Mark. They don't want this patronising, belittling nonsense from women like Zoe George sitting there saying that just because you you are you are the same, just because you play the same sport, you deserve the same. Look, I mean, you can reverse that argument straight away. The New Zealand men's netball team get nothing. Correct. They don't get paid. Correct. So Zoe, does that mean that they should get paid? And I will argue till the end of the earth that no, they shouldn't yeah. because they don't have a competition. They got no audience. They got no but, professional play. They're nothing. Okay. It's but, the same but argument. Stop mate. trying to make out that. The the only relationship between men and women has been men dominating women and that it's always just been don't that way. You, there are so just many other reasons you. for don't this. You. Do your research and stop I mean, she's shoving no, that stuff down she's our obviously, throat. It's obviously working because you've reacted no, to it. No, it's reacted to me too that Rob Nickel in this political environment, the head of the Players Association, oh, he should gives the most be, disingenuous, well, I mean, woke no, I'm answer. Disappointed you, get these, you get these guys, you know it and I know it, mate. It's no different than the CEOs of the provincial rugby unions. The story they'll tell in the media versus the story they tell oh, you totally, off here are absolutely. three different yeah, totally, things. Totally, totally. I've spoken to people inside the Players Association who will tell you that women's cricket is basically putting a huge financial strain on the organisation, but they have to do it in this environment. Well, that's exactly right. And the same as rugby. Look, remember that New Zealand rugby have given the women's game something like 40-something million over the next four years. They do not expect to recoup a cent of that. 
And it's probably going to be a good decade before New Zealand rugby actually, or women's rugby, gets into a position where they can earn. But at the moment, I believe, I thought John Kerbin said it right the other night, it's an investment business. However, at some point, the, the investment is actually going to come to a stop yeah. and you've got to actually stand on your own two feet. Yeah. At the moment, to me, the most important thing is that we let the players play. This is all about the administration, Mark. This is about the fish heads. This is about the people who balls up every sport. That's where the guns should be turn, turned at. And I want to make that point because the women, as far as I'm concerned, their job is to go yeah. out there, do what they do, yeah. entertain, and, train, play hard, uh, win games for New Zealand. And I shouldn't have to say this, but I always want to reinforce this because I know how easily we'll get picked up by some of the left-wing media here. I just want to reinforce this. Love watching women's golf. Love watching women's swimming. Love watching international track and field. Really enjoy watching the Silver Ferns. Love a lot of women's sport. But I don't have anyone telling me I need to watch it. I watch it because it's organically you grown. Don't. It's got brand That's athletes it. and it's That's got it. A, and it actually excites me. Hey, look, I need to calm down. So I'm just going to sniff the cloying in the hat that I'm wearing. There you go. I'm okay. going to smell under my armpits. Go. I'm go. going to combine the two. Yeah. And it's a fragrance called Excellence. Right, let us move then to where it was in evidence in spades yesterday, and that is at Anfield. And if you ask Lachlan, he will back me up here. I suggested on uh, last Friday that I thought Liverpool would actually win this game. I said that all you've got to do is stop De Bruyne. If you stop him passing, because Man City and is Phil full. Foden. Yeah, but uh, good point. But Man City is full of a whole lot of players I call the Grealish. Basically guys who wear the headband, the neck turtle, they train hard, they get paid 70 or 80,000 pounds every single week, or uh, sorry, every single day just about. They probably earn 500,000 pounds a week. But when it comes down to it, can they change a game? Can they make the difference? No, they can't. They're running great. They're great when the team's winning 4 0. But can those guys, when it's nil all, actually do something to make that team elevate and actually beat an opponent which is shutting it down? Liverpool played the game superbly and thoroughly deserved the win. Does it mean that Man City are not going to win the title? I don't think so. Well, I think I think the biggest problem is that you've got Arsenal have got momentum and I, what's going to happen is the, suddenly everything's going to shut down for the FIFA World Cup because even though FIFA did do their due diligence on Qatar, apparently if they had it in the window, it was 45 degrees. But it's, they did their due I, diligence. I it's nothing to do with envelopes well, under the, the table, well, the, of course, yeah, Martin. The, yeah, the, the due anyway, diligence so, translated so, as a so, briefcase. And I don't think Man City, I think Man City have got such a squad when you, 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 you run through it that I think they can just get up and restart. It'll be interesting to see whether the Arsenals and the Spurs, those teams that yeah, have some momentum, can yeah, maintain exactly. it after the World Cup. For Liverpool, look, if you watched Liverpool play City in the very first game of the season, which was actually the Community Shield, Liverpool were brilliant, and they've been woeful, and it's been frustrating as a Liverpool fan. But finally, you saw Salah click. You know, it was a makeshift team, uh, really, with the number of injuries out on the park. But... There was just something about Anfield, isn't there? Yeah, there was totally. just something I about stadiums. I think it's the most fearsome ground in the and, world and, to go and, and play. And, you know, no and, question. Then, and it's funny because after uh, after the game, um, you know, they went to Guardiola and they asked about the Phil Foden goal not being awarded. And he just simply said, it's Anfield. <laughs> well, the crowd play a huge part. And, and, and this is what we but, know. But, 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 you know, it's what we go back to. It's that lack of tribalism, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, but that the, was just my mum phoning but me the crowd, to calm But down. the crowd play a massive part. And the crowd, of course, influenced the referee. Apologise to me! T20 World Cup. We lost a warm-up match to South Africa last night. We lost the final of the Bangla Wash to Pakistan. How do you think we're going to go? Sorry, how do you watch cricket these days? Where do you find it? Well, I, I watched the I watched the the Bangla Wash on Spark. I watched the end of that. Uh, I didn't watch last night. I didn't know what where where that yeah, was. No, I no. Didn't but well, apparently, last week there was a tri series here somewhere. Wasn't well, there in the was country? I, I didn't even watch the that. The T20 World Cup. How does that go starting this weekend when we play Australia? We bottle it against Australia, don't we? We're playing Australia in Australia. We have, yeah. We're going to go out there like Frady Cats. We're going to struggle with the bat. We won't, you know, we we won't play front foot, and we'll get walloped by them in the first game. After that, though, we start our campaign again. How do we finish this tournament? Do we make the top four? Oh, look, I think T Twenty cricket is a game of chance. I think one player can take it away from any team. With Test cricket, you need seven or eight guys over a five day period to win a Test. T Twenty cricket, one or two players can take it away. And look, I think you've always got guys who can get into some form. I mean. You look at what Daryl Mitchell did in the series in England in three tests. Now, he only probably needed Kane Williams, who, who by the way, had been playing in the IPL as a lead-up to that series, um, performing. And I think the results could have been very different against England. So have we got... Look, I think every team's got a chance. The West Indies, prior to Australia winning, had won the pre, two years pre... You're crazy, yeah. But no one knows that because reality is no one actually cares. But if we win it, well, you know, hey, yeah, it'll be the greatest, be the greatest achievement yeah. ever. Um, look, I think as long as you've got Guptill in the team, I think we're in trouble. I, I just haven't... Well, he's not going to play. Finn Allen's going to start. Yeah, see, well, yeah, the but they potentially could play him at three, though. 
And, and as long as you've got Kane Williamson captaining this side, you know, we're always going to be conservative, aren't we? Um, Gary Steadis, coach, we're always going to be conservative. So if you're asking me, and I'm not going to be a coward wise after the fact, have we got a hope? No, we haven't. We, 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 we're not attacking enough. We're too defensive. Um, we don't take risks. Um, but do I care? No. You'll care if we win it. You'll care if we're in the final. That's the thing. I mean, I'm, as no, far no, as the no, T20 World Cup goes. No, I probably won't, Mark. I'm pretty ambivalent probably, about I'm T, 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 T20 won't. cricket. See, the biggest, but a world problem, championship the biggest problem New Zealand cricket did is that they they took the money and didn't understand the intangible value of actually having an audience and actually having a country. Cricket's lost itself by the fact it's gone on the Spark platform. And that's nothing against Spark. No, they but it's it. But it's a new platform and people are already sort of, you know, we're in the habit of Sky, aren't we? Sky television. Well, and I think, I think Sky, what people resent more Scott, than anything else is we resent paying and paying again. Yeah. And, and, so, and Spark's problem and is so, because you're the second bill that you pay. Yeah. I mean, if, if you've got Sky, you're then wrestling, yeah. do I need to... You, but, you aren't going to cancel Sky for Spark, are you? No. But, and, but then every time you have yeah. to buy Spark to buy so, something else, you kind of feel resentful the, because of it. Let, let's say let's say that over, say, five years or whatever the deal was, let's just say it was $20 million, and it's $5 million more than, say, Sky wanted to pay. But under Sky, you had a million more viewers or you had half yeah, a million more right. viewers. Well, then when you go back to, is it ANZ that are the sponsors or whoever, and you go back to them as New Zealand Cricket and you go, hey, it's time to renegotiate. We really enjoy the $2 million you're paying us a year. And then they turn around and go, well, actually, half the audience are watching now. We're only going to give you a million bucks. And so that initial cash grab ultimately ends up coming back and biting you. It's not sustainable. There's no longevity in it. And you, all you end up doing is losing money somewhere else commercially. And so, you know, this is the big challenge for cricket. This is the challenge for rugby. We've yep. just talked about, you know, it's all about the All Blacks. It's all just the cash grab, but they forget the intangibles. They forget the things that you, you know, the accountants can't always see. And that's one of the things I think there's always a danger when you have accountants at the, and I'm not sure if there's that in New Zealand cricket, if there's that in New Zealand rugby, but everything it's certainly the mentality. Come, that's the mentality yep. and there's a danger in that. So look, oh, look, I'd love to see New Zealand win the T20. I genuinely do. I mean, it's a wonderful form of cricket, but I'd actually be more thrilled if we could just get up and beat bloody Australia in Australia this well, weekend, be, mate. Okay. Just so we can get over the mental that would be block, nice, mate. It? Be because there, yeah. we will just, they'll come out there and they'll go, we've only got to talk to them negatively and they're going to crumble. They don't even really need to bowl at us. They know they're living rent-free inside our head, don't they, Martin? Final topic then, the Rugby League World Cup kicking off. We beat Lebanon. Is this still an Australian benefit? Because I know they went in there ranked fourth, which I just thought is ridiculous. Every Rugby League World Cup, the only team to beat is Australia. If you beat Australia, you win the tournament. It's like you look at the Premier League. If you finish above Man City, there's every chance that you probably won it, right? So if you beat Australia at the Rugby League World Cup, you're going to win that. Is it, is, it, is it that clear and cut and dry? Well, history will suggest absolutely, Martin. I think New Zealand was the only team that's won it outside of Australia. Oh, the Great Britain won it. France might have won it in the 50s, something like that. Yeah, that's, in the that's true. But, but in, the, the last 20 or 30 years, But in yeah. the modern era, it's yeah. always been Australia, hasn't it? The biggest thing is, it's, it's all these teams coming together. How important is it off the back of the NRL? How important is it off the back of grand finals? How does it compare to state of origin? It's been a long year. Look, I, I'm sure young uh, Nathan Cleary, he will get his first test cap, I think, against Scotland tomorrow, is it? So that'll be a big deal for him. Then you've got to say Dally Cherry Evans. I mean, they've got just such yeah, depth, haven't the they? I think New Zealand's yeah. capable. But my problem with New Zealand rugby league is I think we have got a change in the guard. I think we've got a new group of players who are just so disassociated from the Warriors now. They're all just hardened professionals out of the Australian clubs. We don't know necessarily a lot about them. I think we're capable, but the problem is you just have this sort of stereotype of Kiwi League teams of yesteryear. Oh, you know, the basic, the basic, the basic, hand, mate, the basic, oh the basic God, the handling drop, yeah. errors. Yeah, I know the drops. Um, yeah, the just dropping the play. basic yeah. tackles, yeah. just not yeah. getting off to a good start. I mean, we all turned up to Eden Park, didn't we, in 87 or 88? 88, yeah. And Kevin Iro, second half we played well, but the damage yeah, was the done damage in the first yeah, half. Yeah. And Wally you look Lewis at that side. So, killed us, yeah. So, yeah, but I mean, look, to be... England put up a really, really good performance against Samoa. They did. The big unknown quantity is Tonga. My yep. always concern Tonga with Tonga and Samoa is fitness. Can they have? How they fit are they? Well, let's find out tomorrow because, because Tonga I, think we've seen, I think we saw a Samoan team which on paper looks really, Look really good. It just absolutely just, just walloped. Just walloped. Yeah. And I always put, when I see teams that have got a hell of a lot of talent, I either put it down to a lack of application or fitness is the big issue. And generally, it's a fitness-based thing. And I think we've seen some Tongan teams who, when they've been fit, beat us at the World Cup, then beat Australia recently. And then I've seen them turn up maybe this year, haven't been as fit, and they've looked fairly ordinary. 
a bit, little bit like the Women's Rugby World Cup, a little bit like the Netball World Cup, probably the Men's Softball World Cup. We want to make these things out to be global, don't we? But they're actually world famous here in New Zealand. There's three countries that are any good at it. Let's enjoy it. But, yeah, let's not get too carried away when we get to the Hellberg Awards, Martin. Have we talked about the Barrett brothers? That There's a nice photo of them in the paper. There was a nice photo in the paper. Injection. You can buy a bottle if you want. It's called Excellence, Martin, by Watto. Devlin. Unbelievable. Incredible. The Platform.